Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my review of this past Sunday's episode of The Walking Dead on AMC, which is Season 9, Episode 12, called Guardians. But yeah, trying to get back to doing some Walking Dead videos, I did a uh, sort of general video um, about a week or so ago. Um, just talking about how much I actually have been uh, liking Season 9, and uh, even the uh, back half of Season 9 so far. I mean, uh, of course, the ratings are going down, it seems like every other article has to post about that. Um, but really, I think overall this may be the best season uh, for the past few years, and I, I'm one that actually likes Season 7 and Season 8. Um, <coughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, the Rick episode is just so strong and uh, just a very, very great resonant character episode there. Um, but, yeah, I think this Whisperers thing has been built up pretty well so far. Uh, I just got to say right off the bat, Ryan Hurst as Beta, he's just perfect. I know some people wanted, like, uh, the Hound from Game of Thrones, who's probably just too busy. <laughs> um, or, like, a Kane from WWE, my all-time favorite wrestler. But I think Ryan Hurst was a really uh, superb choice. Um, because, of course, you know, Sons of Anarchy, he was great on that. Um, you know, he has the height, but he's not, at the same time, he's not, like, completely unrealistic either. Um, he's not just some, just so happens to be the, the biggest man in the world still alive or something. Um, he's big, you know, he's definitely the biggest character on the show. But still, I feel like it kind of fits within that realm of, uh, you know, by chance and reality and stuff like that. Um, and he has the presence to him for sure. He definitely has the creepiest looking mask. Oh, it looks like next up still see him and Daryl collide, which should just be awesome. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, this week's episode is pretty good. Uh, you know, we see Henry, of course, uh, trying to follow them, you know, with uh, Lydia and everything being there. And, of course, he is caught by uh, Beta, and basically Lydia ends up being put on the spot by Alpha to uh, kill the boy, and she sees that she, you know, her daughter does care for her care for the boy, and that's really, really bothering her. <laughs> um, but then they're actually interrupted by some walkers, which does happen. Yeah, they have this great, you know, scheme and, uh, you know, pattern of, you know, going about with the masks and everything, but they still gotta try and sleep sometimes, and they can still be caught off guard, you know, at their own camps and such when they're not, you know, kind of just actively going and stuff like that. Um, so that was pretty good, and that allows uh, Daryl to come along in his own mask, and, uh, you know, help them uh, escape, at least for now, but looks like they're being pursued by at least Beta and uh, probably another small group of uh, Whispers. Um, so that part was pretty good. Um, and of course, we gotta talk about the decapitation, because Alpha has to make an example out of two in her group who believe she's not uh, f fit to lead anymore for varying reasons. And uh, she ends up decapitating the female with a uh, wire type of thing. And I've seen some articles, apparently some people were put off by that. Apparently they don't expect a zombie horror, you know, drama survival series to have violence or anything. Um, so that was that was very unsettling for them. They, they, they just didn't know, you know? They, they didn't know that they were tuning into a horror show, or a show about zombies that eat uh, flesh. <laughs> uh, so they were horrified when someone got their head taken off. So, yeah, it's just stupid. Like, people don't know what they're tuning into, they don't realize... <laughs> It's not on the show. It's what you're watching. I realize what you're watching, man. Um, so yeah, stuff like that has just always been ridiculous to me. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty good episode. Um, you also have some uh, stuff with uh, you know Michonne, and they're deciding because uh, the kingdom needs help. Carol's written letters more than once. Um, we still got to figure out what happened to him over the years uh, since uh, Rick's been gone. Um, because there seems to be this uh, big incident that sort of divided them more than they were before, but, you know, with the marks and everything like that. Um, but yeah, basically the kingdom needs help, they need supplies, but now there are these, uh, you know, like Michonne said, these people out there, you know, masks or whatever trying to kill us, um, so they're basically just putting themselves out in the open if they make this big trade, and the, the paths to get, even get to the kingdom are sort of, uh, time-consuming as it is, so it's definitely risky. Um, but at the end, she ends up, uh, you know, letting them decide for themselves, so we'll see how that goes. I'm sure it will, uh, kind of backfire like Michonne expects it to. Um, 
And you also have uh, Michonne, you know, talking to Negan. He just doesn't believe there's any way he has uh, changed. It's because she's become even more jaded over these years. It kind of, kind of, I think, tied to that same uh, sort of process that everyone else went through with the marks and such. But yeah, he shouldn't believe Negan right away either. But she sort of ends up being taken back by Judith actually uh, wanting to see something in him and actually thinking uh, something's changed about him, even though she couldn't know necessarily, right? But uh, I am enjoying Negan's story so far, and the fact that he did come back in his own yacht, yeah, there's nothing for him out there, like he said, but I think there's really a process in his mind right now. It's actually, uh, he maybe uh, altered things for him a little bit. If you guys read the comics, it, it hopefully it goes down that same very interesting path. And then uh, the last bit of the episode, um, you have the whole Rosita, Sadiq, and uh, Father Gabriel thing. She's pregnant with Sadiq's kid, but she's currently with Father Gabriel. The whole thing's just kind of weird. Um, I, I don't really care for it. Um, not a lot of people seem to. I think Rosita could be used for better things than that. But it, it's kind of similar to what they do in the comics with her, from what I understand. Eugene still has a thing for her as well. Um, but yeah, it just feels unnecessary. And the whole pairing with her, Father Gabriel and Sadiq, about all, all of it just kind of felt random. Um, it was after the time skip, so we never really got to see it develop, and it just feels sort of, uh, just random thrown together couples. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know how Christian Serratos can really talk up the whole plot point for a character right now. Uh, yeah, so basically, you know, she's with that guy, but then she's with this other guy's baby, because they're just starting out, so, The Walking Dead. <laughs> I don't know. It's just not. It, luckily, it's not taking up too too much screen time yet, but it's starting to. <laughs> but yeah, overall, still a pretty good episode. Um, even just for uh, even just for uh, the uh, beta and uh, sort of alpha kill alone, um, I'm probably giving it about an 8.8, 8.9 out of 10. I think it was pretty good. Uh, maybe 8.7 at lowest, but uh, yeah, I'm still really enjoying season nine. And I think people really need to settle down and uh, just uh, see what they're actually missing here. So yeah, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.